Hey, family. Bless God to see you here. Bless God to see you here. Got a little time today, guys. Go ahead and call a friend, a loved one. Have everybody ready, guys, to get into Bible study tonight. If you would, call a loved one, call a friend. Call someone you love, and I promise you, y'all know the standard. Just give us a little time. We'll make sure you get the word of God. right body we are getting ready to move forward thank God you are able to join us tonight for Bible study always praying that God has something to give you guys God always has something to say if we have an ear to hear what the spirit has to say to the body so what we're doing guys is we're getting ready to go into a spiritual um, spiritual set so what you want to do is go from the natural to the spiritual and that is prayer prayer is just the earthly request for heavenly wisdom and that's what we want. We want to be able to understand when we're dealing with the word of God, heavenly wisdom. We need his wisdom as exactly what was God's intent when he allowed his word to be written in this form. What is it that he want to say to us, for us, about us? How would this benefit us? So if you would, call a loved one, call a friend, call a loved one, call a friend, call someone. Just we'll be able to take a moment and um, just get into Bible study. Again, give me 40, 45 minute max of your time. And I promise you, I promise you. You will be blessed. So with that said, God, let's go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have allowed us to go through, and now we are coming to the end of this day, Lord. We just want to say we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you that you have protected us, Lord, from the dangers that were seen and unseen, the dangers that is known and unknown. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed us, Lord, that if we have done our things that we have had, all the things that we have had to do today, we are now at the end of the day and we have decided, Lord, to set this time aside, holy, consecrated to you. So, Lord, I pray that you remove any distraction that the saints may have around them, whether it be TV, cut them off, Lord, whether it be the cell phone, set them down. If they're not using the device, Lord, to be able to hear the word of God, Lord, help us that we may understand clearly how great you are, how magnificent you are, how holy you are, and you should not have to compete against any device for our attention, for everything you say to us is for our own good. So, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus and pray right now that you bless us, that we may be able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the body. Lord, I pray that you keep our mind focused on the moment. So, with a sound mind, Lord, I stand here and say, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message tonight that he may be able to break this message down to his most meager form that we may have a clear understanding of what you are saying, that we may be able to understand it and not only understand it, but apply it to our lives. Oh Lord, bless the saints that are here right now, that they may stay in the moment. To those that will be joining us shortly, Lord, I pray that you get them to safe, Lord God, have a safe passage to get to a safe haven where they may be able to sit down and enjoy viewing the message. And to those that will not be here with us tonight for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus right now that you bless us, Lord, that we may be able to, at a later date, they may be able to view this message and find out what is it that you have in it for them, Lord, that they may apply it to their lives and grow. So, Lord, with that said, any demonic spirit that has the assignment today to disrupt the message in any way, form, or fashion in a realm of the atmosphere disturbance, we please the blood of Jesus right now that you bind that spirit, Lord God. Pull them away from this assignment, Lord, and put holy consecration anointing around this teaching that you may, the people may be able to understand that you may get the glory all along. 
So, Lord, I give to you, Lord, this mind, this heart. My give you all of the use and the faculties of my members that you may use them for kingdom's sake. Now, for doing this for us, Lord, we will be careful to give your name, the praise, the honor, and the glory. For this is a prayer that I ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, say amen. And again, saints, amen is just simply saying you're in agreement with what has been said. So anytime you're going to put your amen on it, make sure you listen to it and hear what has been said so it will be beneficial for you. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to pick up where we left off, saints. We have been trudging through the book of Acts, and we are coming down the home stretch, if you will. We have one chapter to go after this one here, and we are quickly coming to the end of this chapter. So check Acts, the 27th chapter. Acts the 27th chapter. And we was really getting into some, um, really getting into the mix of the thing here with Paul and a lot of stuff that God was pointing out to us and want us to understand while it comes to these things. So what I'm going to do, again, you know it, our ever, ever popular slingshot effect. What is that? To you that may be joining us for the first time, our slingshot effect is we're going to go back and we're going to touch bases lightly on that which we studied last week. And then we're going to catapult forward to new information. OK, that's what we're going to do. Guys, remember always when God is giving you this, you have a week to think on this, a week to meditate on the word of God, to be able to look at what God has to say to you. I only have 40 minutes max with you guys into teaching of the word of God. So what you're going to have to do is really find out what is it that God wants to say to you, for you. What is it that God has in this for you? Because although he may show me something, the more you look into the word of God, the deeper God will take you. He will show you something that you did not even know was there. So if you would, saints, always be prepared, not only uh, writing down or you have the, in this day and time, we have the advantage or we have the privilege of being able to go back and view these messages again and again. So in Acts, we had... Um, we went down for Acts 27, and we took it all the way down to like Acts 31. So I'm going to read those, and then I'm going to briefly touch on those as we move forward. Amen? So the Word of God says in Acts 27, 27, the Word says, But when the 14th night was come, and we, and we were driven up and down the atrium, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that, the, deemed that they drew nigh to some country, and sounded, and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it to be 15 fathom. Then fearing lest, they sh lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast forth anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under cover of, under cover as though they were, as though, as though, as though they would have have cast anchors out of the force out of the force, force ship. Paul said unto the centurions and unto the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. What had me tickled, guys? Tickled to death as I'm beginning to look at this. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna touch on it. I'm gonna touch on it, and we touched on it some last week. But it's hilarious to me when people. People would talk you into a thing, talk brave. People would run off at the mouth and they're the loudest one to be heard. My teacher taught me in the fifth grade, a teacher that I love by the name of Vincent Parker. I learned a lot from him just watching and observing. He said, he used to always say, among some of the crazy things he would say that are memorable, he would always say, an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. You're always going to have those people that want their opinion on things. They're going to be loud about it. They're ready to give their opinion. But when they find out they have the taste of leather in their mouth, that means their shoe is in their mouth. You don't hear them say anything. But as we was going through, guys, this is what we were saying in 27. Again, um, as we were looking in verse number 27, um, sometimes we were saying again, and when the 14th night was come uh, and, and we was driven up and down the atrium about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew nigh unto some country. And we were saying to that that sometimes hope don't come until the midnight hour. So you're looking at a long time they have been out there up under this situation, but God blessed them and brought them through. God says, it's okay. Sometimes you just have to sit still until God decides to move. 
They had no control over the ship or anything of that sort. So that's what was taking place there. And then it says, and we sounded and, and found it to be 20 fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it to be 15 fathoms. Well, what we found out, guys, as we were studying the word of God, a fathom is six feet. And we understand that when they first sounded, it was about 20 um um, about 120 feet out, and then they did it again. It was about 90 some odd feet out. So what they was doing is they was um, really um, understanding they was getting closer to shore. Now in the midnight hour, while you're going through troubled situations and troubled times, as you're coming close to shore, it seems to you like uh, this is a good time to jump off. Um, yeah, you may be close, but still that may um, you can be close, but still that can be just as far as being in the middle of the ocean. Sit still to God, get you where He wants you to be. OK, and so that's what we were um, pointing out to in a situation like that. Sometimes God does not come into the midnight hour. And so um, it seems like you're getting closer. But sit still until God gets you on land. In verse number 29, it says, and then um, fear, fear less, we should have fallen upon rocks. They cast forth ankles out of the stern and wish for the day. So what they said, they got about the business, busy hands. They were not just sitting around doing nothing. They was getting busy even in the midst of the crises. So you have to understand, you can't keep your hands still. You got to do something, doing something, meaning um, if it's something you can do, if this is not working right, don't sit there and just cry about that not working right. Do what you can do over here and we'll come back to this. Get something done. And so in the midst of all of the crises, you can't just sit down, woe is me, woe is me, crying about the situation. Do what you can. For the word says, having done all you know to do to stand, then stand. So you can't do nothing else other than that. Yeah? So you want to get about your business in that term. Okay, verse number 30, we said, and, that's, and here's where I found it kind of hilarious. It says, and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, see what they had did is, well, flee out of the ship when they had left, when they had let down the boat into the sea under cover of as though they would have cast anchors out of the Ship. So what they did is they made it look like they was going to take care of anchoring the boat off. But no, they had already planned their escape. Look, we're going to get out of here. They can do whatever they want to do. So I was talking last week about the difference between a hireling and a shepherd. A shepherd cares for the sheep. A shepherd will do whatever he or she can for the sheep. But a hireling is there for one purpose. And when the rubber hits the road or when troubled times come, the hireling is gone for themselves. And so that's what it was that was going to take place there. They were going to get off the ship and leave the people there. And verse number 31, last it says, Paul said unto the centurion and to the soldiers, except, they abide, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Now, Paul said unto the uh, soldiers, that's what I was giggling about. They did all of that talking because earlier in Acts, the 27th chapter, when Paul told them not to go, guys, don't do this. He told the centurion, don't do this. Don't leave. The captain, the shipman was like, no, I've seen this before. Everything is good. And we was stayed in the ground that when you're walking with God and it looks like trouble, being with God is trouble. in trouble is also a good time. Understand what I'm saying? So to be with God in a troubled time, you're at peace. But to be in a peaceful time without God, you're in trouble. And so it looked really calm. So the shipman was like, well, we can pull out. They know the ship. They know the area. They know the course. Paul was saying, don't do this. And so as they got out there from looking good, got out there and started looking really bad for them. I told you the God, what he would do is when well, the devil pays you up front and works you later on. God works you up front and pays you later on. And we do know when God pays, he pays good. And so it may look like it's trouble the way God is sending you, but it's okay. But you can see what Paul said is he tied those shipmen, the one that was running off at the mouth. Paul tied it to them and said to the soul, to the centurion, which is the leader and to all of the soldiers, if they get off of this boat, we going to die. So the soldiers and the centurions, they detained those guys, okay? So that's where we are there, guys. You're able to get that information. They detained these guys, and the main ones, like I said, did all the talking, would talk you into things, and then all of a sudden, they want to run and get away from things. That's not for you to do, guys. You need to be quick to hear, but slow to speak and slow to your actions. You don't take the advice of no one when God has already told you what to do. You don't need nobody's advice, so you don't hear it. So we're going to get into that now and going through. Now, remember what just happened in 30. And verse 31, where the so Paul gave the word to the soldiers, if these guys get off the ship, 
we surely going to die. So they detained these guys. And this is what God was saying is you ran off at the mouth. You was the ones that talked them how to talk them out of being out here. So you're going to suffer with them. There are many people that will run off at the mouth and tell you a thing. Then when it come down on you, they want no part of it. They the ones that talk the loudest is the ones when it comes to taking responsibility, never show up for it. Again, an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. That's the one that's going to be talking loud and not saying anything. So we as believers, God tell us to be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to actions. So God is telling us pretty much to be a thinking person to think this thing out. Now we're moving forward. In verse 31, look at what was said here. It says, this is very important. It says, then the soldiers cut off the ropes um, of the boat and let her fall off. Do you see the importance of what is taking place here? Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let them fall off. See, here's something you got to understand here, guys. You have to keep this in mind. These soldiers weren't playing no games. And see, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. So you can see these earthly soldiers. God is giving you an example. So it is in the natural. That's how it is in the spiritual. And these soldiers was playing no games when they got word that if those guys get off that boat, they were going to lose their lives. They didn't play around with temptation. What did they do? They cut the doggone thing off. Ain't no chance of you getting on it. See, sometimes we as believers, you got to cut some things off. You keep hanging around that person God told you not to hang around. You keep doing the things God told you not to do. Sometimes you got to go cold turkey and cut it off. Completely cut it back and cut it off where it's not even a temptation to you. Why in God's name, if God has called me to a fast, I'm going to go sit down at Burger King and think about having um, just um, just sitting with my friends at Burger King. No, no, no. See, I'm not going to put myself in temptation. I'm not going to do that. So some of you will play around with temptation and you should just cut it off. The soldiers Meant business. They have seen this. They watched Paul. They listened to Paul as he told them not to do this. They watched everything that was taking place while they was on this um, boat as it was going through the tumult. And so all of this, they're watching Paul. And now Paul has spoken to them and told them, if any of these people get off this boat, y'all are going to die. And so the soldiers said, we ain't playing no games. We're going to make sure our lives are not put at jeopardy. Let me ask you a question. Do you take your spiritual life that serious? Or are you one of those Christians that, um, well, one of those, well, are you not taking your, um, your walk with Christ as serious? God tells you, if you keep watching it, it's going to hook you in and it's going to be detrimental to your life. But you keep playing around the circle of it. God tells you to stay away from certain people. But you know, I'm not going to hang out with them long. If God tells you not to do it, just cut it off, guys. It's like if um, one thing about it, my wife is if she's not going to buy a thing or don't have the money to buy a thing, she's not going to bother with entertaining it. Why look at it? I can't get it. Why torment yourself? And so these soldiers will made it very easy that there will be no torment whatsoever. You have to sometimes just cut things or people or places off. Don't let it keep hanging around you. Because if you let it hang around you long enough, it might just grab you. Or sometimes all it takes is to try that thing one time and it don't hook you. Now you're fighting a demon that is more than you can handle. And God says, I never intended you to carry this. But because you persist on not listening and go your own way, now you're hooked with something that you cannot get free from. And it may be an all lifetime thing of you dealing with this. Because God said, I never told, I never intended you to be here in the first place. You chose to play with sin when God said, kill it, kill it. And so that's what happens right there with the soldiers. The soldiers went on and wasn't playing the games to make sure we're not going to be tempted anymore about this. So if y'all going to get off this boat, jump off and swim. And it was a bad situation outside. So the temptation is going to remove the temptation, guys. Whatever that temptation is, you'll face it. You remove it. If you can, remove it. Don't play games. Sometimes you have to lose loved ones. Sometimes you have to lose friends. Sometimes you have to lose acquaintance, worker, um, co-workers. You have to lose them because they're going to be detrimental to your growth. 
And so in verse number 33, it says, it says, and while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take me, saying, this day is the 14th day that ye have, ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. So in the midst of all of this, Paul was looking at the guys and was telling them. Now, I want you to think about this. And I've said this before. If God calls some of us to fast, I want you to fast for the day. I just can't do it. I, I got to take this. I got to take that. Whatever excuse it is, you find you can't do it. Why? Because many times you have options. Now, is a fast really a fast if you have no options? Meaning that there ain't no food in the house anyway and God say fast. How hard is that? There ain't no food anyway. But when the refrigerator is loaded or when um, a plenty of food is brought by, Everybody's giving a discount right now. So in the midst of all of this, God says to you, money in the pocket. God says, I want you to fast. Okay, that's showing your love for God right there. Because you have options. You have options. And so what was taking place here is Paul was saying, okay, guys, it's been 14 days that y'all have not eaten. So the point I was making with the fasting is this. When there is troubled times in your life, now God may call you to fast and you just struggle and you can't do it. I can't go 12 hours, Lord. I tried my best. I can't do it. and Or go 24 hours. Forget it. But if there's some bad news that come to your family, some devastating news, you will find out your mind is set. A day. That's all you want, Lord? They are 14 days in. 14 days in. And they haven't just been sitting for 14 days. They've been battling. They have been in a battle with the ocean trying to stir this thing and roll this thing and dumping water out of this thing that they don't um, they don't sink. So it ain't this day on a luxury cruise, guys. They are really battling for their life. They are battling for their life. This is not a small ship we're going to find out. This is a very big ship and a lot of people is on it. And so they're battling for their life. Not only that, but they also got to take into consideration the cargo that they have on the ship. They have to take into consideration the personnel that's on the ship. There are some dangerous murderers that will kill them. And in the midst of all of this, they got to keep their eye on all of this and also dealing with the crisis at hand. What are you saying, preacher? Sometimes there's a lot of things that can be going on in your life at one time. There's a lot that's going to be going on and God then going to call for you to do a thing. Let me tell you something. God knows your circumstance and your situation. So if you feel like you can't afford it and God say give it, God mean give it. If you feel like there's no way you can do it and God say go ahead and start it, then start it. Remember, everything God says to you is for your own good. And so what you're going to have to do is learn to trust God in the midst of having nothing or in the midst of a crisis. Trust God in the crisis. You need to do that. And again, that's what he's saying. While it says, um, and while the day was coming on, meaning they're coming on to daylight now. They've been battling all through the night. This thing has been raging all through the night and they've been fighting all through the night. Now day is breaking. And see, one thing about day, God is telling you, you are fighting all through the night, but just wait, hold on until the morning time. You could be able to see a crack of what's going on. See, when it's dark, and I'm talking about you out there in the middle of the ocean or you out there way out the sea, you can't see anything. So you don't know which way you're going. Sometimes in your life, you're not going to know which way you're going. You're going to be in total darkness. That is to say a mental state of mind that may, may be a financial darkness, that may be a physical darkness. But you're going to be in a dark place and you do not know which way to go. And God is telling you just hold on to daybreak because when daybreak, I can see at least what direction I should be going in. Sometimes you got to hold the fork until you get there. Now, they was sure about one thing. They were somewhere near some land because when they sounded, they was 20 fathoms out. See, they went about themselves, did not just disappear. They still knew the sea. They still knew um, tricks of the trade. And so they sounded, remember they was getting close at, at 120 feet, then 90 feet. So what you're looking at is they was getting close. They was getting close. And sometimes the temptation will come on you when you're getting close to a thing. Don't jump too fast. God will tell you, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to move. God will tell you when. God will show you when. But one thing, you have to sit still. So 14 days in, daylight is breaking. And Paul says, uh, Paul besought them all that they should take some meat. Look, guys, y'all been at this a while. Eat. Eat something. 
Get yourself something to eat. You got to nourish your body. You have to replenish yourself. You have to know when to do the things that you're doing. Saying, this is the 14th day that ye have um, tarried and continue fasting. Listen to what he's saying. Continue fasting. So they let you know they was not eating anything. Now I'm going to show you something. They had options. So he's saying, continue fasting. Haven't taken nothing. So when he's saying, you guys haven't eaten anything. You guys been battling this thing. Sometimes you're going to have to sit down and let God do what God does. And that's what Paul was telling them. So you're looking at all of this taking place. Keep the scene in mind. They're out there in the middle of the ocean. A crisis is going on. Their very lives are at stake. And Paul, the man of God, is sitting down watching this. See, there may be a crisis in your life and everything's going on. Trust God. Listen to God when he speak. And so sometimes when you feel like I can't do nothing else, I mean, I, I got to do this. God says, no, no, I want you to do this. Sometimes subtraction means addition when God is in um, dealing with the situation. Sometimes God will take a thing from you in order for you to go higher. And see, you say, well, how does subtraction will mean addition? Think of a balloon, uh, if you will, a uh, uh, helium balloon. Well, the more you take off of that balloon, the higher up it goes. Subtraction. Sometimes mean addition. So sometimes God will take things off of you so that you can raise up to where he wants you to be. And so that's what Paul was saying. You guys need to eat something. Now, mind you, all this was going on. They're looking at the man of God speaking to the situation. He's encouraging them. Get something to eat. In verse number 34, it says, Wherefore, I pray, he's where it says, Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. Now, that's key. Listen to what he says. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. For this is for your health. And it says, for your health. For there shall not any hair fall from the head of any of you. So look at what is going on. Paul is pleading with them. When a person is serious, when a person is serious, they mean business at a thing. You need to understand. Look at what he says. Wherefore, I pray you. Paul said, I'm begging you. Please, guys, eat something. Eat. That lets you know how serious they are. These guys locked in and fasting. Because in a crisis time in your life when you mean business, you set aside all um, play games. I'm not playing no games. You see, these soldiers weren't playing no games when they cut the ropes from the boat to make sure this thing fall. No, you're not going nowhere. They weren't playing no games about eating. No, everybody fasting. If animals on board, they finna fast too. Everybody is fasting. God is going to hear us tonight. And when you have a people that's all locked in with one mindset to do a thing, God will move on your behalf. But the problem is you have so many. Some in, some out. I can't fast right now. But let the doctor give you that report. I promise you, it ain't that you can't fast. You won't have an appetite anyway. So if God telling you to fast... He means just that. And so Paul is begging these guys after saying, and I'm not saying God told them to fast. I'm just saying they was very serious about this situation. They was about the business. And Paul saying, as he told the guys to take something to eat, he came back and begged them, please, guys, eat something. Please eat something. See, when you are serious, people are going to have to really encourage you to do this thing. When you're locked in. And see, these guys were locked in. He says, for this is for your health. Paul said, you guys going to die out here. I mean, a weight loss program, they had it, brother. They had the weight loss program. They haven't eaten anything, and what you're looking at is they're working at the same time. So I don't know how thick they went on the ship, but I can tell you what, they came off thin. They came off of this thing thin. He says, for there shall not for there shall not and hair fall from the head of any of you. So Paul is telling you guys, you have my word. I have already heard from God. Eat you something. I promise you guys, nobody is going to die tonight. Nobody is going to die. Morning has come up on them. The day has broke and they can see light. In the midst of your darkness, when you feel like there is no hope, when you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, just hold on to the morning time. Day is going to break and God is going to say, eat you something. I've got this. I've got this. So just know you're not going to be left alone. You're not by yourself. God is with you through the midst of it all. God is the one that's holding the ship together. So trust God every step of the way. So when the word from God comes, listen at Paul, this is what he's saying. So when the word from God comes to you, and there's no doubt when God has spoken, 
There is no doubt when God has spoken to a situation. So when the word of God comes, and that's Paul bringing them a word, telling you guys, you did well, guys ate you something. Nobody is going to die today. Nobody. And so you'll find out that many will look and be like, well, you know, wow. I mean, that's what he's saying, but they still proceed with caution. So what you'll find out is, um, okay, so what you were looking at is that's what was taking place. A word came, Paul is telling them what to do. Nobody is going to, um, what he's saying, not only you're going to, you're not even going to be injured. That's what he means by, um, for there shall not an hair fall from any of your head, any of your heads, the heads of any of you. So what he's saying is not only you're not going to die, you're not even going to be injured. Only God can have a crisis of that magnitude and give you word that you're going to come out of it okay. Not only are you going to come out of it okay, you're going to come out, but you're not even going to be injured. And so when God has spoken or speaks to these situations, you need to understand God knows what he's talking about. He loves you, but you have to develop a relationship with God and spend some time with God that you will be able to understand when the Lord speaks. You need to know his voice so you'll know what to do. Many times people have a problem when they don't know God's voice. I don't know what to do. But trust me, in the midst of a crisis like this, you hear God pretty well because you don't tune out everything else as far as distractions. There are 14 days into this thing. This is getting tiresome. This is getting boring. I mean... I don't care how bad a situation is. If you're in it long enough, you'll learn to sleep in the situation. 14 days, I can assure you, somebody went to sleep. So you'll learn to sleep in the mix of the crisis. Whatever it's going to be, what it's going to be. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. Rest my body for I need this rest to continue doing what I'm doing. And so that's what he's telling you. I promise you this, guys. I can give you my word that not even a hair will fall from any of you guys' head. And listen to what he says in verse number 35. It says, and when, and when he had thus spoken... He took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he held and when he had broken it, he began to eat. So sometimes people don't know or they're going to trust that God is giving you a word. Let me say this to you. It's good that you know the Lord. But one thing you're going to have to understand is you're going to have to trust somebody. And if you're under a leader who you cannot trust, that's not a good leader to be up under. You need to understand you're going to have to sometimes trust your leader. But leaders are going to have to understand that sometimes you're going to have to show the sheep the way. That's what a shepherd is. Sheep follow the shepherd. Or if the shepherd, if the sheep are hard-headed, the shepherd will get behind and drive the sheep. But most sheep know their shepherd's voice. So they will follow and the problem you have is when a shepherd behind you driving you, you're constantly being pushed in a direction. So that's what it is, guys, to be um, to be driven. But to uh, for a shepherd to go forward, that means the sheep follow. Now, a shepherd has to be a good shepherd of sheep following him because if something is following you, that means it's behind you. A shepherd got to trust those sheep, but every now and then he has to turn around and keep an eye on the sheep because sheep are known to stray. So just keep an eye on the sheep to make sure they're okay. We know what the hirelings would have did. If they could have got off the boat, they would have already been gone, regardless of what the sheep situation is. So what Paul is doing is before them, he have told these guys and trying to entice these guys to eat something. But these guys are terrified. I want to make sure I'm in right standing with God, brother. I'm not getting this far just to eat something and then die. So no, now I know you God's man and I'm going to listen to you, but um, um, what's, what's the show me state? Missouri, I think it is the show me state. Yeah, you show me. <laughs> you show me. You eat something then. So these guys meant business. They were not playing any games. These guys wasn't playing any games. So that's what it says. So Paul, that's what it says in 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took some bread and, and gave thanks to God. So he's letting you know, I'm in tune with God here, guys. This is the God that I told you, we, I'm going to pray and give thanks to him for this food. So... Look at what um, you may be missing in this. Look at this here. Again, look at verse number 30. Okay, verse 33. <laughs> look at this, guys. In the midst of all this is going on, look at 33. And while the, day was, um, while the day was coming on, Paul besought them to take meat, saying, 
This is the 14th day that ye have, tar ye have tarried and continue fasting. Have taken and uh, fasting, haven't taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. For this, for this is for your health, and there and and there shall not a hair fall upon uh, fall up any of your head. Guys, do you see something here? If Paul told them to take some meat, what does that mean? See, you can't take no meat if meat's not there. So these guys had the option to eat. Food was there. Paul cannot ask them or beg them to eat if there's nothing there to eat. So this ship was big enough that they had food on the ship. There was plenty of food there for them. Because if they're going to where they're going, this was a rather large ship, we're going to find out. And a lot of food had to feed the people. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been on a cruise, but when you're on a cruise, one thing about it is there's a lot. One thing you do a lot on a cruise is eat. They got plenty, plenty of food to feed you. Now, I hear. I hear they got plenty of food to feed you. Now, if I hear they got plenty of food to feed you, I just told you what? I've never been on a cruise. So the point that's being made is one thing you learn, everything you see, there's plenty of food, plenty of fun. All kind of activities, but it's plenty of food. Everybody I know that never been on a cruise, they always say, we ate a lot. I kept eating. Just lose their mind. So Paul is begging them now to get something to eat. Again, in 35, he says, and when, they had thus, and when he had thus spoken, he gave, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. I'm showing you that I'm thanking God for this, that God is in control and it's okay to do this. And he says, and when he had held, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. So Paul is saying, okay, I'm going to show you guys. I'm not trying to deceive you in any way, form, or fashion. Let me eat it first. See, people sometimes are not going to move until they see the leader move. And that's the way sometimes it should be. If you are the leader, you need to be the one to take first part, take in the fruit. You cannot be one that sit back and watch someone or tell them to do it. Sometimes you have to show them how to do it. You can't just assume that a person knows a thing. Because a person been in church a great deal of their life does not mean they know church etiquette. Some churches go through the theatrics and the people have not learned the law of God's word. And so therefore, they've been in church a long time, but their problem is it doesn't seem that way. Just know that God has you in the midst of this all, in that crisis in your life, as dark as it is, and as the ship is being tossed and turned, as everything is going on and you have options, God says, eat something. Eat something. God wants you to understand that he has you in the midst of all this. God wants you to eat something. So what is he saying? Get into the word. Study the word, guys. God is saying, quit crying about that situation or that thing you keep talking to him about. Start giving him thanks and praise for it. Quit crying about your circumstance or situation. God already knows about it. He knew about it before you got into it. You need to thank God for your situation and sit with an ear to hear what the Lord says. Because there's nothing that catches God off God. God is right here with you. God is for you and God will see you through it. So yes, it may be dark and the ship may be tossed and turning. And yes, it may be you don't know. And even your friends may be ready to turn their back on you or jump ship. Your even significant other may be ready to jump ship and say, it's a over. Uh, this is a, a faint cause for you. It's over. God says, no, take, eat something. For I will surely bring you through this. And that's what Paul was saying. And look at verse number, number 36. He says, Then were they all good. Then were they, then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. See, once you got a word of confirmation from God, it's okay. You are waiting for a big job interview that you went through. You're waiting for a doctor's results to a test that have had you kind of in turmoil. You're waiting for if the job is downsizing to see if you're going to be one they're going to touch and say we have to let go. You're waiting to see this thing and you're in anticipation and you're waiting. Do you know how it feels to when you finally get the word, the results are negative? <sighs> or, or they look at you, no, you're not going to be fired. Or look at you and say, yes, you got the job. 
Or even if it is, you want sports fans. And there's a lot that is going on. And sports is right there. The, you're looking at this whole situation. And you're saying, sitting there holding your breath with your team. God can do miracles, people. Do you not know God is a God of miracles? I can prove there was a miracle that just took place Sunday. Do you know the Panthers won? God showed up and showed out. So don't tell me God can't do the impossible. Don't tell me God can't do the unthinkable. So you are finding that situation. God said, take some, eat something. Take some chairs and eat. Because there was a lot of people believing that the Panthers would have a totally defeated season, wasn't going to win nothing. Well, that's over with. You can breathe. You can breathe. God's got you guys. So what you need to do is breathe, knowing God has all of it in control. He's never going to leave you. He is never going to walk away from you. Even though you're in the dark, even though you're being tossed, even though it seems like those that you love the most was ready to jump ship on you. God says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'm right here with you. Eat something. I've got you from here. Father, we honor you. We bless you and we thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. Oh, Lord, just a word of comfort to the saints that they may understand in the midst of the crises. You have our number. You know exactly where we are. And when we want to abandon the course that you have us on, Lord, just encourage us a little longer to stay right where we're at because you have it totally in control. Help us, Lord, to not stress about it. Help us, Lord, to not worry about it. Help us to get a bite to eat and just let you do what you do. So, Lord, the word tonight, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus that the saints of God receive something that was beneficial for them. Help them, Lord, that they may apply the word that they have heard tonight to their lives and see the benefit thereof and grow. Oh, Lord, bless your children that we may all continue looking to you, depending on you, for we have all concluded in our hearts and minds, except you build this house, we're just laboring in vain. Lord, if you say it's okay, it's okay. And we will choose to obey you, honor you, and stand according to your word. So Lord, we just want to tell you thank you for hearing this prayer. We believe by faith that you have honored this request, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Is there someone out here who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And you have came across this message tonight and you're saying, this is made simple for me. I realize I need a savior. I've tried to do it myself and I've been fighting this storm a long time. I'm ready to say, Lord, I've heard your voice. I yield. If you are out there and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and savior, and you would like to know him as your Lord and savior, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. But before we move a step further, let me ask, is there someone out here who once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and walked away and now you would like to rededicate your life to Christ? If you're that person, here, come and take the hand of the person that never knew Christ and we're going to walk him through salvation. But I want you to walk with us and we're going to walk you through rededication. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I ask you, Jesus, to hear the cry of my heart. I want to repent of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. If you would forgive me, Lord, and come into my life, I will serve you all the days of my life. Oh, Father, I make this open confession with my mouth. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead. And Lord, I believe in my heart that God, you raised Jesus and he is king of my life now. So I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that God, you have raised him from the dead. Lord, therefore, according to your word, you have saved me. So Lord, I pray that you bless me and I ask you to come into my life Sit on the throne of my heart. Bless me, Lord, that I may hear your spirit and obey you. I thank you, Lord, for being King of kings and Lord of lords of my life. 
And I right now, by my own free will, choose you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. If you will put that down in the comment section, we will be so, so happy to celebrate with you. Now, you may ask the question, what do I do now that I've gotten saved? I'm not sure about this. I just felt God calling me today and decided this was the time and I'm moving. So what do I do? Well, you get a good Bible-believing church and you sit down and learn the Word of God and live thereby. Now, you may say, I'm not sure about all of this. I don't know what truth is. I've seen some shady business. Okay, well, if God laid it on your heart to be here well, then that means you trust me enough to go this far. Well, stay with us that I can keep pouring the word into you, that you may keep growing, that we may know God's will for your life. Now, you may say, okay, then, um, what does it take for me to be a member of Firm Foundation? Although I may live a long way, what does it take to be a member? Okay, two things. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God all the way through? You say, uh, yeah. Okay, the second thing. Are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry as long as they line up with God's word? You say, yeah, I can do that. Well, then we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and work with them to get them where Christ wants them to be. Now, you may say, yeah, now I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? Well, we're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. You can Google it, guys. We would love to see you there. You may say, okay, then, I want to visit, I not only want to visit you guys, but I want to help support the ministry. What do I do to, to, to help to support this ministry? Well, you can go right here on this page. There's a QR code where you're able to give. I assure you, every dime will be used for the kingdom of God. Now, some things I want you to remember, guys, to the saints, look forward to seeing you this Sunday. I'm going to say this um, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, but remember, Saturday is MIT class. Guys, y'all guys in class, I need you guys there early. Now, remember, if you are there at 8.30, you get refreshments. Breakfast is there for you. Start sharp at 9 o'clock. And y'all see right now, Bishop Williams is not playing no games. He is teaching this class. Y'all guys came ready last week. We need you guys to come on and ready to do this thing this week. MIT class is this week. This Saturday, 9 sharp. 8.30, we're serving. So I want to see you there. Or Sunday morning, um, 10, 9 a.m. in the service, if you're in service with us. But 10 a.m. there for you guys online. We love you guys. We look forward to seeing you right here on Sunday. If not, we definitely want to see you Wednesday. You be blessed in Jesus' name, for we love you guys.